make well it, an ip that they own mm -hmm. and uh turns it into a new game okay so pitch me the ideas now i'm going to record this conversation pitch me the ideas talk, okay. talk through this like literally brain dump go all in what we got what are you going to sell to asmo you know okay. well, first first idea is best idea go for it you got, right, so the first idea, the best idea, is simply uh, effectively a Pokemon Go equivalent, or oh, I don't. I just turned a my Pokemon video. Go. Okay, um, a Pokemon Go equivalent that focuses on mini games, um, location based and set in the Android Android universe using that IP. Um, it can use augmented reality to play little games, um, mini kind of, uh, what do you call it, like browser games, just a, a collection of small games of various types, um, not just augmented reality, but, but several different mechanisms uh, that you play at various locations that use the theming of like Android, um, rooted in their card, the, the old card game Netrunner. So you'd have like, um, I know the IP has gone for that, but the the principle be you'd have like hack games where you you know perform a sequence of tasks, you know whatever move your squares around to make a a, a, a thing do a thing. You know you basically just create lots and lots of very small, short form. Um, I can't remember the word for it. Lazy games, uh, hyper casual games, and each of those leads to you acquiring goods that you can then transfer credits whatever in in world system you're going to use um and you simply you're basically just collecting building combining collecting building combining it's you know the whole game becomes it then enables you to use the android ip uh, in a real world game where you so, walk around doing things so which which particular game are you thinking about for this one for this, this is android so the game's called android well, the universe is called Android. The IP is called Android. The IP is called Android. And so it's a near future cyberpunk. Okay, so Android's a near future cyberpunk game, and it's currently uh, played as a board game. It's a collect. Yeah, it is. It's a collection. Like Android is a collection of games set in like this sort of this cyberpunk universe. Mm -hmm. Um, and we would be then extending that universe into a digital platform, which is like a completely organic. Uh extension of it that would make total sense yeah like the, the, there'd be nothing would be out of place anything you did with it would be completely in place each of the games you could do buying and selling you know we're talking a collection of essentially it's a collection of location-based hyper casual games that use augmented reality as like a hook but that tell the android story on people's mobiles is so people come yeah. and play it together as a board game right yeah it's played together as a board game so you think that Bringing AR into that game will enhance the game and the game experience. No, it's a completely new game. It a completely it's just using the universe. This is just taking the IP and building something new using all of the themes of the board games. It's a kind of film noir themes. You've got investigation, you've got hackers, corporations. Where would you play that? Yeah. Indoors or outside like Pokemon Go? Uh, well, uh, yes to both. But outdoors like Pokemon Go, literally both. There'd be types of games you could play indoors. I mean, there's no limit to how much you can attention sink people with this. But so like, you can the cost of building something like this. What's the reality? Like, take a take take take. No concept. I have no idea. So okay. So viability. Of... Lots. And and what cost could be lots. The cost could be limited. Depends how good you wanted it to be. Mm. Why therefore? Mm. Do you think Asimode would like this? Why do you think they would fight for this? Oh, they should have been making this already. Why? This is like a game that whether they do it with us or not, this is the game they should be making because it would be massive. Yeah. With their like with their engine, with their um, promotional abilities, this is a game that they could promote and really, really run with and move into like a new stratosphere of tech. Okay. This would be a an absolute flagship game. They've got like IPs that are going places and doing stuff. This would be a, a real, this has got potential to be much wider scope than uh, anything they've touched on before. And so how would we, how would we improve the gaming experience for them using AR? How are we going to make this really unique and really special? 
so the AR thing would just be that you'd be like with this, you'd be building in AR experiences with it, scanning the area around you. Uh, yeah, you just you'd add AR layers to it. Okay, and you, you'd you'd build in. You envision yeah. you already see this universe. Work. Yeah, you could just build. You just take what they've got, and then you just build into build on top of it. You know, you build like a, a scannables, so you're kind of scanning the world around you through your phone. You're seeing whatever your world with AR layers over it, referencing the Android IP. Do you feel that AR would add a tremendous amount of, of value to the experience? What, why? Why is it? What, why does it lend itself so? Uh, it's not just AR; it's location based. But yes, so immersive. AR actually is only part yeah. of it so yeah why is why is it why does this lend itself so well for being a location-based game um the story of okay so the story of android is very much based um i'm oh, sorry the story of android is very much based in the kind of near future where ar is almost a part of that world um same with vr is a part of that world uh all of these things they're all they're all together, you know, they're all um, in this in this Android story kind of story universe. These are all things that do exist. And um, you would simply be referencing into them and you would be using kind of immersive and modern tech to tell the narrative. It would be important as a narrative device rather than as a gameplay device necessarily. So you're showcasing how forward and how futuristic it is, not by saying your character does a an AR thing, you're saying you're, you know, you you do an AR thing as your character. So you're you're kind of using those technologies as a <laughs> narrative method, which is something you can't really achieve. You're taking all of that stuff just a step further. And that's, you know. And and, and as someone you I mean you love you love this game yourself. You play you do, you still you play this game a lot? Yeah. Yeah I've played Android Loads. Uh, Netrunner was a, an absolute classic. Uh, and infiltration. There's there's a lot of IP set in that. There's a lot of games set in that IP. Um, a digital extension, I would say, focused on hyper casual to get more people interested in it, would be a very logical step. And okay, so what 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 else do you see for um, the Asmo kind of IP? Okay, so that's just the first idea. Uh, second idea, I would. Like if I was them, the three, yeah, there were three things. I'd make the Android extended reality game play everywhere. I'd make a, um, I'd make a puzzle box game. So I would, well, there's a few different ways you could take it, but the next game I would build, or again, the game, because each of these ideas, I would say is a complete stand up game that should be made. Okay. So the next idea would be uh, to take home escape rooms to the next level. Home escape rooms are currently quite popular. You know, with the pandemic, people have wanted to play, like, look for, people have had to look for new types of games to play. So the classic board game played over Skype or whatever is good. Board game arena is good. Tabletop, you know, we've got all these different simulators, but they're all simulations. Um, the escape room, however, has kind of thrived in this environment. People can't go to escape rooms, but you can kind of get an escape room in a box. Um, you get some neat parts, you've got some neat puzzles to solve, your whole family enjoys it. It's very much a game that works for everybody. Um, and you don't necessarily need your usual gaming group. It's very, it's very hyper casual. Um, so people can just enjoy these games as they would in the real world almost. It's not that big a jump because of the, the way they work with little bits of story. They're not but they, there are some limitations. Um, I would use augmented reality uh, and I would produce some high quality home escape rooms. Extendable, like you could even go for subscription models for it if you're gonna wanna go really cut throat, but you'd look at, um, you'd look at making base, base extendable home escape rooms using augmented reality to add layers, to add new games, puzzles that can be solved multiple times you don't have to reset things you can use your phone as like part of it um yeah so how would it work so just imagine like the setup. that would be mine you create a, so you create an escape room you got a box 
Okay, so the first setting, I'd say you go with uh, Arkham Horror. It's Cthulhu. It's all weird and spooky. You got your, you got your box. You get your puzzle. I don't know. Maybe it's a little wooden trinket or something. Um, you've got your phone's got like a, an app you download to it. Uh, we'll call it uh, Looking Glass. The the own the phone functions as a kind of um, uh, you say in the game, it's you know a, a looking device that lets you see the mystics of the the nether realm. You hover that over your wooden box, um, and it comes up with different symbols on each of the uh, each of the sides. You can press them depending on how you know. You can either tap them on the phone, or you can so you can solve a puzzle from this physical object using your device. So you turn and your in, physical space into this into this escape room space, and then you start interacting with this yes. escape room through. Yeah. Suddenly, you that that I think is really beautiful. Yeah. The idea because you take it, you take a, a set of flat game pieces, and you make them a bit more real and a bit more immersive. And, and you make that you experience turn better. Your physical space into the escape room, and it's over the augment your yeah. environment with this. Yeah. With these and just the and it's the red yeah. like this petrifying in some level because suddenly you, you're like now i'm gonna turn my space into this new dimension yeah. in which now i have to escape from and i'm kind of yeah now it's like a monster comes out the door and stuff yeah and really? it's that you do that with we do that with our imaginations anyway and like when you get one of these boxes you've got this kind of home escape room and you're kind of you know the monster's going to get you or whatever the story is um and you're like you're kind of imagining it and you've got the paper pieces and you're kind of solving puzzles but there's always that leap of faith that's kind of being taken by the person playing. Um, and when you play like a computer game, mm. a lot of those leaps of faith are kind of, you know, there is a monster in the room with your little dude. But so, yeah, you, you know, there is a puzzle in the room with your dude and you're solving it through them. Whereas this takes the physical piece you've got, adds the digital layer to it, but gives it special effects. Basically, it's giving reality special effects. Right. So when you start playing the game, it's more immersive, it's better. Um, I would like to try that. It sounds awesome, actually. I think that's yeah. So you, no one's ever done things like that before. Not really. There's a couple of things that have started to touch on it. Like it is going to be. There's there's signs that this could well be a pretty big trend, um, but nobody's really really gone for it. No one's had the experience to really go for it yet. Do you think it's something you could design yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Like I could just make one. I could make one of these with time and um, time and funding. I could literally just make one of these. Yeah, and uh, in terms of in how can you ensure that you get it on on brand? On brand, uh, it worked really closely with a decent company. I mean, like as mode would be really good because they have the brand, they have uh, the knowledge, the actual games writers. Um, you would take like working really hand in hand with them. You would take their brand, their quality of production like their quality of game pieces, their level of expectation and rise up to it and kind of intermarry the two. One of the limitations I think for these games so far has been everyone's just kind of doing it and they've got their ideas and it's not got that strong kind of guiding vision and guiding brand to make it hit that kind of, you know, that Disney level of quality, that that immersive. Um, yeah, it needs like a big brand to really drive its because there's production values I don't get with like from I, I work from an AR standpoint, I work from a game standpoint, everything else, but I don't necessarily understand I enjoy playing games and I enjoy being overwhelmed by them and enjoy, you know, being immersed into a board game. But there's obviously levels of quality, production and knowledge that go into producing those pieces to to get that. Um, and you want to work with a company like that so that they can they can deal with that side of it. They can help guide that, you know, that AR vision for home. So it's the two are kind of intermarried and both are, are tip top quality. Um. You want to you want to drop another any any one? Do you want to keep going? You got some. And what would be the no, next? that's the second one. Uh, there's probably a third idea, but I've got to remember what it is. All right, I think that's good. I think that's good. Okay. okay. I'm ask you for the last time, just because with the same real, real insight and clarity, explain Android. So really, just as, as clearly as possible, really explain what would we do for for Android, the universe of Android, make it location based. Okay. Yeah. So the Android. Like an Android game would focus on a location-based game. Yeah, it would be location-based. And the Android. Oh. Sorry, we're going to start again in a second. Okay, there's probably someone else is dealing with that. I can hear screaming in the background. Uh, the pains of being a father. 
Um, right. An Android game would focus on... Uh, it's kind of overwhelming. It would be... You'd aim to make a simultaneous location and virtual game based around the premise of the Android universe's kind of vast storytelling network uh, to tell the story of runners and uh, corporations and their kind of interactions through augmented reality, um, through like hyper casual games, collection, uh, construction of virtual objects and artifacts. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd make it location-based. People go to particular locations that are referenced in game. Um, you'd have collaborative elements and you still also have a home element. So you would make it so that you could leave to play and play events at locations, but also play from home doing simple hyper-casual puzzles. Uh, all of it kind of told using that core, like Android storytelling that's been built as part of the setting. Um, you know, you've got factions. You've got <coughs> there, there's just so much scope to that game. You could you could plumb. You just see AR just making total sense because of the. Yeah, AR would literally be to immerse the person and to make sure that when you're playing, uh, what you're what you're playing is true to the story, as opposed to you playing a character who does something, who then sees AR. You you would take away those. Um, those steps of remo those kind of removals from the game world, um, and those leap, you know, those those steps you have to take to have your imagination leap, and you would just you would be the runner, you would be playing, like you know, you'd have the augmented reality experience. You'd be able to make it as immersive as possible for somebody. It's like a LARP, you know, laughing live action role play, but with mini hyper casual games that can be played at home by yourself, uh, out in the world with your friends, you know, potentially with family, with anybody. It'd be you know, a real connecting piece. Nice. Okay. That'd be mine. Cool. Uh, thanks, David. Um, I'm gonna just I'm gonna end this and then jump back in the call. Okay. <laughs>